Husqvarna number no. one is the most advanced computer sewing machine on the market today. Why you'll save countless hours of preparation and sewing time. Thanks to our exclusive sewing advisor, always active, actually setting up your stitch, the program display to preview what you sew before you sew it, plus your info display for everything you need to know to sew. Hi, I'm Sue Hausman, Education Director for Viking. And I'm Rhonda Heinge, Educational Consultant for Viking. And our de Education Department at Viking Husqvarna is committed to helping you learn your new Viking machine to the fullest. This video version of your Viking Husqvarna number no. one and 1100 owner's handbook is designed to help you familiarize yourself with the many features and the creative options of your new Viking. Read and stitch your way through your handbook using this video as a guide. You may want to stop the video while you stitch the sample. Simply rewind and watch the technique again if you have questions. As you watch and as you sew, start your VCR counter at zero. Then when you stop to sew and mount your samples in your handbook, write the tape counter number for that technique on the same page for future reference. Soon you will see that your sewing has never been faster, easier, or more professional. And your sewing is really fun with your new Viking Husqvarna number no. one. So for now, let's get to know your machine. There are actually two buttons to the left of the Viking Husqvarna nameplate. The right button turns on and off both the power and the lights. Simply push it down to turn your machine on. Push it again, bringing it to the up position to turn it off. When you turn your machine on, a straight stitch will always be selected. Your new Viking Husqvarna is the first sewing machine ever that automatically sets the tension when you turn it on. When tension changes are needed for specialty sewing techniques, the computer in your Viking will adjust the tension. If you should desire to manually adjust the tension for a very heavy upholstery thread, for example, simply set the dial manually. The next time you turn your machine on, it will again automatically set the tension. The sewing advisor is built into your Viking Husqvarna, and it is always active, always selecting the best stitch, best stitch length, stitch width, and tension for your fabric and your technique. Located above the nameplate, the sewing advisor lists the types and the weights of fabric in the right column and lists sewing techniques in the left column. First, enter the type of fabric by weight and then select your desired sewing technique. If your Viking should beep or flash, can you get it to beep or flash, Rhonda? Sure. <laughs> when you select a stitch or a technique, what that means is that that technique is not recommended for the fabric weight or type you're sewing on. You may, of course, ignore the beep, override the computer, and use the technique if you desire. Now, fabrics are classified as woven, stretch, leather, and vinyl. Most fabrics that do not stretch at all would be entered as woven. And the weight of fabric is basically how thick or heavy the fabric is. For example, Rhonda has a batiste, and this would be classified as a lightweight woven. A poplin or a chino would be a medium woven. And a denim or a jeans type fabric would be a heavy woven. So that's what you would enter. Now, in the same manner, most knit fabrics are entered as stretch. A trico, for example, would be entered as a light stretch. Most sweatshirt-type fabrics as a medium stretch. 
and a velour or a very stretchy heavyweight sweater knit would be entered as a heavy stretch. Enter leather when sewing with hides, skins of animals, and for ultra suede, and enter vinyl for most artificial leathers and vinyl type fabrics. There are actually six interchangeable cassettes included with your Viking Husqvarna number one, four with the 1100. Additional cassettes will be available from your Viking dealer as new stitches and techniques are developed. In fact, we have a new e-cassette already with beautiful stitches. Each of these cassettes has 50 stitches or letters. Cassette A, the utility cassette, includes all the utility stitches, several computer programmed applique stitches, serpentine quilting, and button and button sewing, plus more we'll talk about later. Cassette B, the block letter cassette, has a complete block alphabet, punctuation, and numbers. Cassette C, the script letter cassette, or C for cursive, incorporates the script alphabet with numbers and with several decorative stitches, especially suitable for combining with those monograms. Cassette D features virtually unlimited decorative capabilities. Beautiful heirloom stitches, hearts, flowers, leaves, vines, several sizes of cross stitch, and of course the exclusive Viking Husqvarna pictogram embroidery. All of these can be programmed and combined in program with other cassettes as well. On the beautiful new Viking number one, cassettes L and M have large motifs, scallops, edgings, and monograms plus omni-motion stitching, and we will talk about that later in the tape. Now to remove a cassette from your Viking, grasp the cassette from the right side and slide it toward you and to the right. While the cassette is removed, notice the black wheel on the right. This actually adjusts the angle of your program display for optimum viewing. To replace a cassette, Slide it in to the left and then push in toward the machine to click it in place. Now, of course, one touch selects the stitch by technique on the sewing advisor or directly from the cassette. Once you have entered the fabric you're sewing on into your sewing advisor, you will either touch the technique you wish to sew or you will select a stitch directly from one of the cassettes by touching the picture of that stitch. Either way, one touch does it all. The stitch will be displayed visually in the program display window, and the sewing advisor will set the correct length and width for your project, and those settings will appear in the darkened portion of the info display window. You may, of course, override any of these settings for your choice if desired. The sewing advisor will also set the tension and recommend the presser foot and the presser foot pressure setting. The correct needle, well, it'll tell you to cord a buttonhole to stabilize whatever's needed. There'll be no guesswork, no experimenting. Your sewing advisor does it all. Preview on your program display every stitch or program before you sew it. The display window to the left of your panel is the info display and to the right of your panel the program display. The program display pictures each stitch as it will be sewn. The presser foot pictured indicates the sewing direction. Now take a look at that presser foot do you notice that the bottom of the program display is the left side of the presser foot? Swing that around mentally over to the presser foot and you'll see the way that stitch is formed out under the foot. 
Now the cursor is always under the first stitch as you begin to sew, and this cursor will of course be used when we program later. When you change the stitch length, or the stitch width, or make other pattern changes or programs, you will always see the altered stitch or program immediately on your program display. No guesswork. Preview everything before you sew it. A Viking exclusive. Now the number at the top right of the program display indicates the cassette and the stitch number that you're sewing. Additional information such as mirror image, elongation, a reverse symbol for button and buttonhole sewing will all appear on the program display. And we'll be explaining all this later in the video. Now the window on your left is the info display. We say it's for everything you need to know to sew. Looking at it from left to right, it displays the needle stop position, the sewing speed, the stop function for tying off and for single pattern sewing, a low bobbin indication, the stitch length, the recommended presser foot and the recommended presser foot pressure, and tells you to drop feed when needed, tells the stitch width, advises when a stabilizer is needed or a corded buttonhole, has a twin needle safety, tells you what needle size and type to put in for your project, tells the function and the memory. Now, don't worry if this seems like a lot of information now because this beautiful info display is going to actually replace your instruction book. And as we sew each technique on this video, you're going to see exactly how to use your info display to save time and make your sewing easier. The needle pictured at the left of the info display has an arrow indicating whether your needle is set to stop up out of your fabric or down as you're sewing. This is set by the button below the needle stop illustration. And you'll see that on the selection panel. You're pointing to it, right Rhonda? Good. Right. Set the arrow up so that your needle ends in the highest position. This would be for most of your sewing. And would eliminate thread tangles and make it easy to remove your work from your Viking. Should you ever desire the needle down while sewing with the needle set in the up position, simply tap the foot control lightly after stopping and this will drop the needle into your fabric for pivoting, for example. Now for applique, for quilting, and for other specialty sewing, you may want to stop with the needle down. Then simply touch the needle stop button down with the arrow in the down position and you'll see that the needle will always stop down. Next on your info display is the sewing speed. Now the word speed appears next to a bar on the info display and when the bar is a third height that would mean you're in slow and two thirds would mean you're in medium and of course the full bar would indicate that you're sewing in fast speed. Your sewing advisor, as always, does all the work and will select the best speed for many stitches and for many techniques. In most cases, you cannot override the speed selection to sew faster for a specialty stitch or technique, but of course, you can always choose a normal or slower speed if desired. You would simply touch the button under the word speed on the selection panel. Remember though, you actually control the sewing speed within a setting with the amount of pressure you put on the foot control. And as always, your Viking Husqvarna with electronic speed control gives you full piercing power at any speed, even when you're sewing through the heaviest of fabrics. By the way, any time a flashing bobbin should appear on the info display along with a beep sound, <laughs> That indicates that you have about a half a yard of thread left on the bobbin. Wow, is this going to be great. No more half sewn seams or buttonholes. And you can replace your bobbin without interrupting your top thread. Simply wind from a separate spool.
This again, a Viking exclusive. Your stitch can always be lengthened or shortened at the touch of a button. Simply plus the stitch length button to lengthen the stitch and minus it to shorten. A 2.0 is 13 stitches per inch. Consult your handbook for other length equivalents. The presser foot illustration gives you important information. It will blink and a beep will sound if you try to sew with the presser foot up. No mistakes ever, even with freehand work. And you do have about a quarter inch extra lift on the presser foot, so it's very easy to place thick, thick fabrics underneath. Simply raise the presser foot lever as high as it will go manually. Now the number and the arrow above the presser foot indicate the presser foot pressure setting. Presser foot pressure actually regulates how much pressure or push the foot puts on your fabric as it's going through the machine. Incorrect pressure will often cause shifting or creeping of layers, puckering or irregular stitches. Because your sewing advisor is always active, a number will appear above the presser foot pictured on the info display. And this number is the best pressure setting. The dial on the left side of your Viking Husqvarna regulates the presser foot pressure. Simply set the dial to the number recommended above the presser foot. You'll also see a letter to the right of the presser foot on your info display. And this will advise you of the best presser foot to use for each fabric and technique and for each stitch. No need ever for trial and error or getting that book out to look it up. Your Viking Husqvarna is equipped with a number of snap-on presser feet for special uses. And these are conveniently stored in your slide off and on accessory tray. Each one is marked with a letter for easy identification. And of course, that letter matches the letter displayed to the right of the presser foot pictured on the info display. Snap on the right foot for perfect results every time. When changing the foot, first be sure your needle is in the highest position. Then, to snap the foot off, pull it down and toward you. To snap the new foot on, insert the little bar that's on the foot into the clip on the ankle and push it into the foot firmly. It'll catch right in that little clip. Great. <sighs> the stitch width is displayed in the second darker portion of the info display. The sewing advisor will set the recommended stitch width for each stitch or technique. But you may always change the width setting from zero to six with the two buttons below on the selection panel. To increase the width, simply touch plus. To decrease the width, touch minus. You will find that your stitches have been programmed at the optimum width setting. This will eliminate time consuming adjustments. We will discuss the other info display recommendations as you sew through your handbook. But for now, Let's get ready to sew. With a little practice, you'll thread your Viking Husqvarna in seconds. The main spool pin at the back of the machine can be either horizontal or vertical, allowing you to sew with all types of threads. Use it vertically for standard spools and horizontally for tube type spools and specialty threads that tend to slide off the spool. An additional spool pin can be pulled up from the top of the machine for twin needle sewing and two thread top stitching. Simply place your thread on the spool pin. When using it horizontally, place the thread on the pin and slide one of the spool holders with the flat side against the thread to hold it in place. Use the large spool holder for large size threads and the small one for tube type threads. Usually I store the one I'm not using underneath so I know where it is. Now your presser foot should be raised when you're threading as this opens the tension discs. Proceed with threading by laying the thread into the pre-tension guide at the back of the Viking. 
The thread should lay between the metal and the white guides. Then bring the thread forward, laying it into the tension disc. The thread may go on either side of the disc, but be careful not to lay the thread outside the disc. This is a common error which causes problems. Bring the thread down and under the check spring from the right and then back up into the take-up lever. The take-up lever is slotted, so you don't have to thread through it. Simply drop the thread over it and pull toward you so it drops into the slot. Then from the left, pull the thread into the final guide at the top of the needle and then through the needle from front to back. Doesn't the white color behind the needle make it easier to thread? Finally, once you've threaded the needle, pull the thread under the presser foot and into the thread cutter on the left side of the machine. This will ensure a perfect start by holding the thread in place and will cut the top and bobbin thread conveniently at the end of every row of stitching. What a time saver! Now let's wind a bobbin. Because you wind the bobbin directly from the needle, you never have to unthread your Viking to wind it. Another great time saver. With the Husqvarna logo symbol on the bobbin facing out and the concave side in, place an empty bobbin on the bobbin wind spindle at the right side of your Viking. Bring the thread from the needle under a metal presser foot. Do not wind with a transparent foot as it thread could cut the foot. Now bring your thread across the front of the Viking, laying it in the groove under the nameplate. Continue around the side of your Viking and under the bobbin. Wrap three turns of thread on the bobbin and bring the thread to the back under the thread cutter. Step on the foot control and wind. Wasn't that easier? You notice we did not use that tension guide. That would be used when we wind directly from a spool and is explained in both your handbook and in your instruction book. Of course, your bobbin will stop automatically when it's completely full. Consult your instruction book to wind your bobbin directly from the spool. Now remove your bobbin from the spindle and cut the thread on the thread cutter. First, place the bobbin into the bobbin case with the logo symbol out. Bring the thread into the tension slit on the side of the bobbin case and up under the flat tension spring. The bobbin will turn clockwise when you pull the thread. Your new Viking Husqvarna bobbin system eliminates errors. Bring the thread around the back of the bobbin case finger. Insert the bobbin case into your Viking with the finger straight up. Check to be sure it's firmly in the machine. Then bring the thread tail under the cutter to the left of the bobbin case and cut. No need to bring up your bobbin thread. It will come up automatically as you start to sew. Another great time saver. Your built-in sewing advisor will save you hours of time and frustration. It always knows the best stitch and the best stitch settings for your fabric type and weight and sewing technique. Once you have entered your fabric type and weight into the sewing advisor, the next step for more normal sewing is to enter the sewing technique needed. Your Viking Husqvarna sewing advisor has eight techniques to choose from. These techniques will take you through all garment construction and many other sewing projects. You will sew a sample of each technique on several fabrics. Purchase this Viking Husqvarna Owner's Handbook and Companion Fabric Packet from your Viking dealer so you can sew along with us. The seam technique is used to sew two pieces of fabric together with a seam allowance that will be pressed open. I have an example here. The edges of the fabric will usually have been finished with overcast or with your husky lock before you sew the seam. The non-glare needle plate on your Viking is marked with seam allowance guides. Use the 1-5 for 5 8 inch seam allowance 
and the edge of the foot for approximately quarter inch seams. For additional seam allowance guides, consult your handbook. Your sewing advisor will select the best stitch for your fabric. In the samples you are sewing, you will see the sewing advisor selects a straight stitch for woven fabric and a tiny zigzag elastic stitch for stretch fabrics. Select a woven lightweight fabric now and cut it in two so that we can seam it together as if we're sewing the seam in a garment. Enter woven lightweight into your sewing advisor and touch seam. Now consult the info display. Presser foot A should be on your Viking and you'll see a size 70 needle is advised. Your Viking Husqvarna is fitted with an 80 needle when you receive it. Sew these samples with the 80 needle, but before beginning a project or garment, change to the recommended needle size and type. Now set the needle stop up for this technique. Your thread should always be under the foot and toward the back or in the thread cutter before beginning to sew. Place the two pieces of fabric right sides together and stitch the seam now along the 5 8 inch seam guide. Use your thread cutter to cut and hold the thread at the end of the seam. Your stitch length can be shortened or lengthened if you desire. Simply touch plus or minus under the length on your info display. To tie off or back stitch at the beginning or end of seams, touch reverse. You will sew in reverse permanently if you touch reverse twice very quickly before beginning to sew. The machine will sew in reverse until you touch the reverse button again. Touching stop will tie off in place. You will again need to touch stop to cancel it. You will want to stitch another row on your fabric now, changing the length as you sew and experimenting with the tie-off at the beginning and end of your sewing with either reverse or stop. You may also want to try stitch A4. When you touch it, it automatically ties off at the beginning of your sewing by going in reverse a few stitches and then stitching forward with your straight seam. Okay, now let's seam a different type of fabric to see how the sewing advisor works for you. Select a stretch light, we've chosen a trico, and cut it in two. Enter stretch light on your sewing advisor and touch seam for the technique. Consult the info display and reduce your presser foot pressure to four as advised. Place the two pieces of fabric right sides together and seam now along the 5 8 inch seam guide. Notice that your sewing advisor has selected a tiny zigzag stitch. This will add stretch to your seam so it won't pop when you wear this garment. Your sewing advisor is always working for you and you can preview the new stitch on your program display before you even sew it. We will sew overcasting next. And again, I'll bring up my sample to show you that I've overcast the edges to keep them from fraying and to help them lay flat. You should select a woven fabric of medium weight and enter woven medium on your sewing advisor, then touch overcast. Consult the info, info display and snap on the recommended foot. This will be the J foot. It has a little wire to sew right along the edge of the fabric. Now place the edge of a single thickness of the fabric under the J foot, aligned with the pin along the edge of the foot. The J foot will prevent puckering and pulling. Our sewing advisor has selected the best length and the width for your fabric. Overcast wovens to keep them from fraying. This would be perfect for unlined jackets. It's usually easiest to overcast the edges of your garment before begin sewing together and then to construct your garment. The next step we will do is seam overcast. 
The seam overcast technique actually sews the seams, and I'm going to get this sample to show you, because it not only sews the seams, but it overcasts them and sews them simultaneously. This saves a lot of time, as you can see, and it gives a very professional finish. Select a lightweight stretch fabric and cut it in two, and enter stretch light on your sewing advisor. Now touch seam overcast. Consult the info display, and place the fabric pieces right sides together. Now seam and overcast them along one edge. You may wish to sew along the edge of the fabric if your pattern has quarter inch seam allowances, or sew along the 3 8 inch seam guide for a 5 8 inch finished seam on your garment. This seam allowance would be pressed to one side when the seams are finished. If you did use the 5 8 inch seam guide, then trim away the excess fabric. There actually are a number of different seam overcast stitches on your Viking Husqvarna. You will repeat this technique with a piece of stretch heavy and woven heavy, and you will see that your sewing advisor will select the best stitch, the best length, the best width, and the tension for each fabric type. Isn't that incredible? Your sewing advisor chooses a different stitch for each type of weight and fabric. The Viking Husqvarna is truly intelligent, saving you hours of time and eliminating countless errors. And on your program display, you see the stitch exactly as you'll sew it, before you sew it. And remember, you can override these settings if you should desire. When changing the width with a seam overcast with the J foot on your machine, use caution because the stitch could hit the edge of the foot. Now, do you ever baste? You know, we baste temporarily to try a garment on for fitting. We also baste when we gather and occasionally for marking. Our next technique will be basting. Select a medium woven fabric and enter woven medium on your sewing advisor and touch baste. Did you notice the tension dropped immediately so that will be easy to pull out later? Consult the info display and snap on the A foot. And of course, we're back to woven medium, so it's going to suggest our presser foot pressure be put back to the normal setting of six. Now we will cut a two inch strip of fabric and set it aside. Fold the other piece of fabric in half and baste down the seam line. And then stitch a second row and pull out the thread. Because your sewing advisor automatically set the stitch length for the longest length and for basting, reducing the upper thread tension, this makes that bottom thread easy to remove. You may want to now stitch down the single thicknesses of the strip. That's what you'd usually do for your gathering. And then pull them up for really even gathers. Be sure you run two rows. Mount these samples in your workbook so that you can refer back to them. Of course, that reduced tension makes that easy to pull out. Now we'll talk about blind hem. Blind hem creates an invisible hem, similar to the hems you see on ready-made fabrics. I have a sample to share with you, and you'll see that I've overcast with an off-white thread, such as we did earlier, and then hemmed with a green thread. And you'll see that you don't see it on the right side. What a time saver. Now, the blind hem is not recommended for lightweight woven fabric or for light stretch fabrics, leathers, or vinyls. And a beep will actually sound on the sewing advisor advising you of this. Instead, you would use the hem function for those fabrics. Now to sew your sample, select a stretch medium fabric, such as a sweatshirt fabric, and enter stretch medium on the sewing advisor, then touch blind hem. Consult the info display. It will recommend your D foot. The D foot actually has a guide, so snap it on now to make your sewing easier. Presser foot pressure two. 
is also recommended. So adjust now for that sweatshirt fabric. Then fold up a two inch hem along one edge of your fabric and pin. Your pins should be perpendicular to the hem with the first pin entry right at the edge about a quarter inch down. This is to help you fold back so that when you fold back you'll be folding back right along that pin. Hold the fabric now hem side up with the hem to the right. Fold the hem under toward the right side leaving about a quarter inch of the hem extending to the right. You'll be sewing along this extension. Put the fabric under the D foot with the folded back edge against the edge of the foot. Now begin sewing. You'll see that that inside edge riding right along the D foot provides a guide to sew along so that the stitches will not show on the right side of your garment. And as the large zigzag swings to the left, it should barely catch the fold. Adjust the stitch width if necessary, but generally your sewing advisor will choose the perfect width. A30, the woven blind hem, will be selected for woven fabrics, and A29, the elastic blind hem, will be selected for stretch fabrics. What a time saver this is, Rhonda, great job, okay. Now we mentioned the hem function and the hem technique actually is a visible technique and we'll be doing that for example on a shirt tail hem such as we see at the bottom of this blouse. In fact this is so invisible you really don't even see it. But the fact is that we would stitch a hem where we've turned it under and this will be selected when you use a fabric type or weight according to the sewing advisor. For this technique, let's use a lightweight fabric of a woven. Enter woven light on the sewing advisor and touch hem. Now consult the info display and snap on the A foot as suggested. Then fold up a double quarter inch hem and stitch the hem from the right side for the best result. This takes a little bit of practice, but you'll find that it really does make it easier. For wovens, leather, and vinyl, a straight stitch will be selected by the sewing advisor. For stretch fabrics and elastic stitches will be selected. A flat lock similar to those seen in ready-mades will be selected for medium and heavy stretch fabrics. Try this visible hem on your next sweatshirt or shirt tail blouse for a very professional finish. You will want to repeat this technique on stretch light and stretch medium fabric. Usually a wider single hem is then taken on stretch fabrics. The top stitched hem is shown in many, re many ready-made garments today and provides a fast, easy, professional finish, especially suitable for those fuller, softer skirts that we're seeing. Well, we're ready for some buttonhole sewing. And the buttonhole capability on your Viking Husqvarna is truly unlimited. I have a little sample here of a little flower that we did using the 10 different styles. There actually are more than 10. One for every fabric and one for every style of garment. Any buttonhole size or any type can be programmed into memory so that all your buttonholes are sewn exactly the same as the first. You may even want to store a favorite buttonhole in memory for a future project or just in case you didn't finish your garment today and need to put those garments buttonholes on tomorrow. Buttonholes have never been easier than they are on your Viking Husqvarna. Now you may select buttonhole on the sewing advisor or by touching it directly the style you desire on cassette A. Let's sew one now. First, we would mark the placement of the buttonhole with our pictogram pen. And for most fabric weights and types, you use presser foot C when sewing buttonholes. And the reason for this is that it has graduated lines to assist you in seeing the length of the buttonhole as you sew. It also has grooves underneath. For the fastest one-step buttonhole, later in the tape, we will use our buttonhole sensor foot. 
Now snap on that C foot and select the correct buttonhole for your fabric type by simply touching buttonhole and medium woven on the sewing advisor. It will automatically be set the length, the width, the tension, no time consuming experimentation to find the right buttonhole. Now remember that all fabric should be interfaced when you do buttonholes and of course occasionally on a lightweight fabric your sewing advisor will actually recommend additional st stabilizer such as stitch and tear be put underneath. We suggest always that you sew your first buttonhole on scraps of the same fabric as your garment with the same kind of interfacing. Then try it with your button before you enter it into memory and put all those buttonholes on your garment. We will first sew a buttonhole and a memory buttonhole from the sewing advisor using presser foot C. We have our medium woven fabric and we've stabilized it with stitch and tear. Enter woven medium on the sewing advisor and touch buttonhole on the sewing advisor. Consult the info display. We're set with our C foot, but remember now our presser foot pressure should be back at six. And Rhonda's just looked at that info display and got everything set up. As a length guide for your first buttonhole, place your button on top of buttonhole foot C and note the mark just beyond the button. Now when you sew the button, begin at the bottom of the buttonhole as your Viking will sew away from you. This actually makes it much easier to see the finished length. So you'll sew until that first buttonhole column, the left column, reaches the desired mark that your button came up to on presser foot C. Then touch reverse once. You may touch reverse while you're sewing or while you're stopped the machine will immediately sew a bar tack at the top of the buttonhole and down the next side. Touch reverse again just before the end and bar tack that end as it reaches the end of the buttonhole foot. Keep sewing until your machine completely ties off. Now you will carefully cut this buttonhole with a seam ripper and there was one included with your Viking. Simply put a pin in one end of the buttonhole to avoid cutting too far. Cut toward that pin and cut that buttonhole easily. You will sew all ten buttonhole styles with these quick steps, whether you select them on the sewing advisor or directly from cassette A. You can program any buttonhole into memory so that every buttonhole on your garment is identical to the first. And again, you can store those favorite styles. When your machine is turned off, it will still remember. Let's program a buttonhole now. Touch the select function button right on the selection panel to bring up the PROG or program mode on the info display. You're now in the program mode and ready to program. You will want to bring up an empty memory and bring up a memory with the memory one to nine button. Full memories will display on the program display and of course you can clear those by touching clear. If all your memories are full, simply select one and clear it by touching clear. Now use the same woven medium fabric from your last buttonhole and enter woven medium on the sewing advisor and touch buttonhole. Again the info display to suggest the C foot and we're all set to sew a buttonhole just as we did before. Beginning at the bottom of the buttonhole and sewing the left column, touching reverse at the end of that column to sew the bar tack and then the right column. Sewing until the left and right columns are the same length then touching reverse again to bar tack and tie off. Be sure to keep your foot on the foot control until your Viking stops sewing. The next step would be to inspect your buttonhole, try it with your button, and if you like it, enter it into memory. Now how do we put it in memory, Rhonda? We simply touch that select function button one more time, which brings up REP on our info display. That stands for repeat. You have now entered that buttonhole, that repeat buttonhole into the memory. 
go ahead and sew another one now on your fabric. In fact, you could sew just as many as you need today, tomorrow, or whenever. Anytime you desire this buttonhole type and size, simply touch the select function button to bring up repeat on the info display. And of course, the memory. You bring up the memory that has your buttonhole programmed into it. Wasn't that easy? Great, three perfect buttonholes. Well, now we're going to do a corded buttonhole. And a fine cord such as gimp cord or pearl cotton or top stitching thread can actually be sewn into the buttonhole to reinforce it and to keep it from stretching out of shape. The info display will actually recommend a corded buttonhole for stretch medium and stretch heavy fabric. You can cord any buttonhole though and do on those which will get a great deal of wear and tear. Select a stretch medium fabric now and select a length of pearl cotton from your kit. Enter stretch medium on your sewing advisor and touch buttonhole. Consult the info display. It recommends the C foot and you'll notice too that it does suggest presser foot pressure too for this spongy knit. We will loop the cord or pearl cotton over the finger at the back of the foot. Now we normally do this of course on the machine, but for your purpose of seeing it better, we've taken it off to loop it. Then you bring it under the foot and it will actually lay in the grooves on the underside of foot C. Now simply sew your buttonhole. You'll be sewing of course first the left side of the buttonhole. And don't hold on to that cord as you sew because the cord actually feeds along with the buttonhole. Again, when the left side is as long as you need, touch reverse. It will sew the bar tack and then down the right column. And just before the last bar tack is sewn, stop sewing. Tap the foot control lightly so the needle drops into the fabric. Raise the presser foot. Pull the cord toward you. Take it off that little finger and eliminate the loop. Cross the cord over itself. Now lower the presser foot, touch reverse, and continue to sew. This way the bar tack will actually catch the cord right in it. So when you've completed your buttonhole, now you can trim that cord off and trim that excess cord away. This will be your sturdiest buttonhole ever. Looks great, okay. I'd like to tell you about the 10 different styles of buttonhole on the Viking number one and 1100. They're listed or lined up there at the bottom row of the A cassette. A41 is a bar tack buttonhole for tailored garments with more cutting space than A42. A42 is the most commonly used bar tack buttonhole for tailored garments of most fabric weights. A43 is a European style buttonhole, a lapel buttonhole used for men's lapels and often on Chanel type jackets or European type jackets. A44 is a round end buttonhole, most often used on lightweight fabrics for blouses and children's garments. A45 is a heavy reinforced stretch buttonhole for the strongest utility buttonhole on work clothes and used with stabilizer for heavy sweater knits. A46 is a medium reinforced stretch buttonhole for lightweight or medium wit knits and for wovens which require a heavy duty buttonhole. A47 is a beautiful heirloom buttonhole for that hand look buttonhole on heirloom sewn clothing and other fine and delicate garments. A48 gives you a keyhole buttonhole with a square end for tailored jackets, coats and blazers, especially in menswear. And A49 is a keyhole buttonhole with a tapered end for tailored garments. Now, a2 buttonhole, a straight stitch buttonhole, is actually brought up when you enter leather and buttonhole on your sewing advisor. This straight stitch buttonhole is often used on leathers and ultra suede garments in ready-made. 
There is another straight stitch buttonhole for stitching patch method bound buttonholes on your optional E update cassette. Why don't you now sew a sample set of all 10 buttonhole styles and place them in your handbook for future reference? I know Rhonda has one in hers. And always when in doubt, we suggest that you trust your sewing advisor to choose the best buttonhole for your garment and that it will set, of course, length and width. The many specialty buttonholes give you endless options for personal choice. Many times you'll be copying ready-made styles. Your Viking Husqvarna is unlimited in unique, programmable buttonhole choices for the most professionally finished garments ever. Now for the easiest one-step buttonhole ever, you will want to use the buttonhole sensor foot, which actually measures the length of the buttonhole as you sew it. I want to show you a sample on this one. Actually, on this Geiger type or European jacket, what I've done is stitched buttonhole after buttonhole after buttonhole after buttonhole and then woven a ribbon through it. And of course, I can change that ribbon for different seasons and different uses and to match different garments. Isn't that great? Now because the foot is actually measuring the buttonhole length, even if the weight or the weave of the fabric causes a drag while sewing in one direction or both, or for example up against a facing, all your buttonholes will be identical when you use the sensor buttonhole foot. We're going to do this on a medium woven fabric, so of course we enter woven medium into the sewing advisor, we touch buttonhole, and we can, if we wanted to, select the buttonhole of our choice from a cassette. It's really your choice. Now, you won't use the sensor buttonhole foot with A46 or with the A2 buttonhole for leather, but don't worry, your Viking will just beep at you and say, don't do this. <laughs> so, before we snap on the sensor foot, I'd like for you to notice the white that's on the red wheel. This will be lined up with the corresponding white mark on the foot before beginning to sew. That way you always start at the start. Okay, let's snap on the buttonhole sensor foot. And you're, you'll notice there's a little plug that plugs the power cord into the machine near the back of the light cover above the needle. That'll tell the length to the machine. Next, line up the white range on the side of the measuring wheel with the white marking line on the foot. When the foot is correctly set, the sensor foot symbol will appear on the program display. If the measurement wheel is incorrectly positioned, the symbol will flash. Now, consult the program display for the size buttonhole you have selected. This will come up preset at a 16 millimeter button. Notice the 16 shown on the display. We will sew the 16 buttonhole. To determine the buttonhole length though, place the button on the buttonhole rule in your handbook on page 48. Or you may ask your dealer for one of the buttonhole cards. Now fold your fabric in two and stitch your buttonhole. The wheel must ride on your fabric to measure and be sure again that those whites are lined up as you start. Simply sew with our beautiful sensor buttonhole foot and you'll have perfect buttonholes every time. Now once you've sewn one, you may want to stitch a second buttonhole. And I will tell you how we adjust the size of the buttonhole in just a moment because we use our ELG or elongation setting. How'd we do, Rhonda? Perfect. This is what I love about that sensor buttonhole foot on any weight of fabric. Now what if we want a larger buttonhole, Rhonda? We would touch the ELG button. The size will be increased by two millimeters at a time. The average buttonhole sizes are 16 for a 5 8 inch buttonhole, 18 for a 3 quarter inch buttonhole, 20 for a 1 inch buttonhole, and 22 for a one and an eighth inch buttonhole. You will want to stitch some other sizes and maybe some other styles on your sample now. And remember always that buttonhole size will vary with thickness and type of button. 
always stitch a sample buttonhole on scraps first. Consult your handbook to program these buttonholes into memory and to sew them with the sensor foot. Well, now we have buttonholes, and I guess we need to do some buttons, right? We'll sew some buttons on. And of course, buttons are sewn quickly and easily with your Viking Husqvarna. This technique works beautifully for hooks and eyes and snaps as well. And I have a sample that'll show you how it really helps. For example, on the jacket that you see here, we put a lot of buttons on this one, boy, and that would make it much faster to be able to do that all on my Viking. Let's select a fabric that's medium weight and a woven. And of course, then we'll enter medium weight woven on the sewing advisor. We'll touch the word button. Now let's check that info display. It says to lower the feed teeth. Now we haven't done this yet. Push the button next to the on-off button to lower the feed teeth. Now no foot will be recommended, so snap off the foot and use the ankle only. Next, place your fabric and the button under the presser foot ankle with the holes in the button lined up with the swing of the needle. Lower the ankle to hold the button in place. Then check the swing of the needle by turning the hand wheel with your hand before beginning to sew. This will be sure that the needle doesn't hit the button. Finally, zigzag the button on now with six to eight stitches. Once you've stitched your stitches, touch reverse and your Viking will tie it off. The zigzag width is set for most buttons. Now Rhonda has a four hole button, so she's going to move and do the next four, or the next two holes. But if you were sewing a tiny button and the zigzag was too wide, or a very large coat button requiring a wider swing, then you would simply plus or minus the width so that the swing of the needle would go into the holes. When sewing a button onto a garment, first stitch your buttonholes, cut them, lap the buttonholes over the other side of the garment, and mark the button placement through the buttonholes with your pictogram pen. You may want to glue stick or scotch tape your buttons in place before sewing. Button sewing has never been faster and never been easier. But even quicker, you can program the number of stitches and the tie-off for button sewing to save time. So let's program again. Touch the select button to program, P-R-O-G, and bring up an empty memory. Then touch button on your sewing advisor. Now place your button and fabric under the ankle and sew the first two holes in the button. Six to eight stitches generally hold the button in place. Now once you have those six to eight stitches in place, you're going to touch reverse to tie off. And we've got a real big button here, so this is a good lesson because you're seeing that Rhonda is actually widening the width of the stitch because it's a coat size button, so it needed a wider stitch. Touch reverse and the tie off will automatically stitch for you. Now touch select function to repeat or REP. Your button sewing program is now entered. You may sew as many buttons as desired. Rhonda's going to sew the other two holes with this program. Simply step on the foot control. Your Viking will take the number of zigzag stitches that you have programmed and the tie-off automatically. I like to leave the button program in one of my memories and then each time I sew buttons I simply bring up that memory and sew. This makes it very fast and very easy. Now I want to tell you about the button reed which is for heavy fabrics and this would be to sew buttons on with a thread shank between the fabric and the button itself. It has two different widths, thick and thin, and you would simply place it under the button before beginning to sew that button in place. When button sewing is completed, 
To raise the feed teeth back to the sewing position, push the feed teeth button to bring it to the up position. The teeth will not come up until you start to sew. And Rhonda's doing that now. Because your Viking Husqvarna requires no oiling, your only maintenance is to clean away lint and dust. Brush out the bobbin area and under the throat plate occasionally. It's difficult to say how often, but anytime you notice an accumulation of lint in your Viking, or if it's not sewing properly, clean the bobbin area with a lint brush. To brush under the throat plate, you will lower the feed teeth and lift the throat plate up and toward the back of the machine. Brush it out now. If you've been sewing napped or terry cloth fabrics, you will have to clean it more often. Now to replace the throat plate with the feed teeth lowered, align the plate from the back and slide it to the front with a downward pressure so the clips on the underside slide on. Don't forget to raise those feed teeth again for general sewing when you're finished. As a general rule, have your Viking Husqvarna tuned up by your dealer on a regular basis, and this will depend on how much you sew. This now completes your basic one class, and we have stitched through the techniques used in garment construction. Doesn't your sewing advisor make it easy? No guesswork. Every stitch is set perfectly and immediately by your sewing advisor.